People wind up at state-run mental health hospitals when they're at their most vulnerable. But state records show that DCF employees trusted to help them are understaffed and overworked. Some are working an average of 80-hour work weeks every week of the year. That's almost like uh, working you know, two full-time jobs. Is working so many extra hours putting patients in danger? Yes, and staff. My brother's not safe in these hospitals anymore, and he's not uh, getting the proper treatment. Our 10 investigates Jenna Bourne found out that the burden is falling on those that are mentally sick, the patients, exhausted workers, and you, the taxpayers. Hey, 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 sir. You're seeing hallway footage of another patient um, attacking my brother who was in the shower naked. We've blurred this video, but the chaos is clear. Uh -uh, oh, 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 You're looking inside Florida State Hospital, a mental health hospital run by the Florida Department of Children and Families. Jonathan Hereford's brother, Sean, was being treated there for schizophrenia. Jonathan is Sean's legal guardian, and he says he believes there was inadequate uh, staffing to protect his guess, brother. Uh, there was a lack of staff supervision in the actual bathroom itself. So another patient came in there and he took one of those hard, wet floor signs and bashed my brother in the skull with it while he was in the shower. A hospital report lists two employees who got involved in the hallway scuffle that came after. No! No! Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Those two individuals uh, that were staff could not handle that situation. Our loved ones are in these hospitals and the lack of staffing is affecting every aspect of somebody's life that's in there. Ten investigates found DCF-run mental health hospitals Florida State Hospital in Chattahoochee and Northeast Florida State Hospital in McClenny are so understaffed, some employees are working an average of 80 hours every week. That's almost like uh, working you know, two full-time jobs. How did we find that out? We sent a public records request to the agency that handles human resource management for state employees, the Florida Department of Management Services. We asked them for the top 25 overtime earners among state employees, and pretty quickly we noticed a pattern. The number of DCF employees who made the top 25 list has doubled every year for the past three years. The top overtime earner in the state last year worked for DCF. She made more than $55,000 in overtime pay alone. That's as much as the average Floridian household makes in a year, according to the U.S. Census. And that extra money comes out of taxpayers' wallets. We showed our findings to Ben Wilcox. He's the research director at Integrity Florida, a nonprofit research institute and government watchdog. I think it would be appropriate for uh, a legislative committee to investigate and try to determine why these employees are having to work so much overtime. All this brought us to the question, what the heck is going on at DCF? So we asked them, well, not in those exact words. And they tell us all 20 of the DCF employees on the top overtime earner lists work as nurses, direct care staff, or security officers at Florida State Hospital and Northeast Florida State Hospital. Those mental health hospitals are both in rural parts of the state and require 24 seven staffing. I caught up with DCF's deputy secretary on the phone. Do you think that all this overtime is an efficient use of tax dollars? I, I, I would argue what's the alternative? The alternative is that, that we have to do staff all contracts which are significantly more um, expensive than than allowing folks to do, to work overtime. I'm sorry, staff aug. Can you can you uh, clarify? Staff augmentation, staff augmentation contract contract out. But despite all that overtime, state audits have found there are not always enough people on shift at those two hospitals. This audit, published two months ago in October 2020 by the Florida Auditor General, says Florida State Hospital and Northeast Florida State Hospital did not always comply with minimum staffing requirements. Is all this overtime putting patients or staff in danger? No, not at all. In fact, I think it's, it's making sure that we have the, the standards of care that, that they should expect. We want to make sure that our staffing ratios are at the right place in the entire time, you know, throughout the 24-hour period. Is working so many extra hours putting patients in danger? Yes and staff, absolutely. Paul Whittingham has been working at Northeast Florida State Hospital for 20 years. He's also a local union president. The staff are tired. And when you're tired, we all know that mistakes can happen. Your reflections are not what they should be. Your response time is not what it should be. 
you know, it, it just puts a lot of people at danger, at risk. He says all that overtime is caused by one thing, low pay. You have an awful lot of staff that volunteer to work the overtime because they need the finances, they need the money. Whittingham also blames low pay for the hospital's struggle to attract and keep employees. I know people that stock shelves make more than vast majority of the staff at Northeast Florida State Hospital. We are here today to keep fighting for that wage increase. After union demonstrations in January, Florida lawmakers approved a 3% pay raise for all state employees. Prior to this year, it's 12 years since state, of state employees had a pay raise. Is that 3% pay raise going to make a difference for these hospitals? Not, no, not at all. Hereford tells us it's people like his brother who pay instead. My heart breaks. Are we trying to have a bare bones system or are we trying to be actual effective and help people out? Now that October state audit that Jenna mentioned shows COVID-19 is making the problem even worse. Let's take a deeper dive into that. Within that audit, DCF responded that the pandemic is causing critical staff shortages at Florida State Hospital. DCF says it's using CARES funds to get supplemental temporary staffing from an employment agency and that they've had to reassign rehabilitation therapy staff to residential areas so that they can meet staffing minimums.